Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Dr. Jamie Donnelly. I am a tissue viability nurse and vice chair of the Tissue Viability Society. I would like to begin the presentation by thanking each and every one of you for taking time out of your evening to learn more about our new skincare champion program and network, which we believe to be an exciting and innovative program for key workers across the social care sector. This evening I'm joined by a number of the Tissue Viability Society trustees. So without further ado, I would like to introduce Nikki Stobbs and Tina Chambers, who are independent nurse consultants and tissue viability nurses by background. Ina Farrelly, who is the Director of the Centre of Excellence and Innovation and the lead podiatrist with Accelerate, which is based in London. And Victoria Murray, who works for 3M as a clinical specialist for the North Europe region. Nikki, Tina, Ina and Vicky have a wealth of experience and are extremely well respected within the world of tissue viability in the UK and beyond. Tina will present the second part of this presentation and Nikki, Ina and Vicky will be on hand to help answer your questions and queries. Over the next 20 minutes, we plan to explain the importance of this project to practice, describe the project and our work to date, outline the project plan and discuss how success will be measured and most importantly, to answer your questions. Within the UK, there are over 20,000 organisations with 1.5 million employees trying to meet the needs of children, teenagers and adults at risk or with needs arising from illness, disability or poverty. In adult care, 90,000 of these employees are allied health professionals and nurses and approximately 1 million are care assistants who work for care agencies or care homes. COVID-19 brought the care and devotion of these dedicated key workers into sharp focus and it has taught us that society owes a huge debt of gratitude to health and social care workers throughout the United Kingdom. With regards to tissue viability, we know that skin fragility is a multifactorial issue which affects all individuals of all ages, but in particular the very old and the very young. Individuals with mobility issues, individuals with spina bifida and cerebral palsy, bariatric patients, oncology patients and those living with chronic illness. Adverse outcomes include skin tears, hematomas, pressure ulcers, moisture associated skin damage, infection, lower limb ulceration, burns and cancerous lesions to name but a few. Care workers are in a key position to protect their patients and their clients from many of these problems. They are also in a key position to recognise problems early, problems which require further investigation and treatment. However, they will only be able to do this if they understand what to look for and what to do if concerned. By provided trusted education, our key workers will most definitely prevent a number of common tissue viability issues and lead to early intervention for others. The Tissue Viability Society, which is a UK charity and the world's oldest wound care organisation, has a 40 year history of meeting the needs of patients and registered practitioners through the development of guidelines, innovation and multidisciplinary working. We know that we have the knowledge and the skills to develop a programme of education for care staff for all four nations and most importantly, that is the right thing for us to do, especially as there is a clear link between education and training and patient experience and clinical outcomes. The Society was so committed to this project that the trustees spent the entire month of July doing the sponsored walk, which was a little out of this world, as it was our Ruby anniversary 
We set a goal, which was to walk enough steps to get to the center of Mars, the ruby red planet. We actually did enough steps to take us there and back again, raising a fantastic 7,000 pounds, which will be used to help to fund the pilot project. In November, we were delighted to be the recipient of the Ergo Foundation Award. This award will help to ensure the longevity of the project. I will now hand over to Tina, who will outline the project plan. Thank you. Thank you, Jeannie. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Skincare Champions and our proposal for you. Our goal is to develop a group of skincare champions working in home care and care homes. Our aims are to support home care agencies and care homes to provide excellence in skincare to their clients and residents and to develop a network of care homes and care agencies with a mutual interest in improving and delivering excellence in skincare. A skincare champion will be a carer from a care home or home care team who is employed by an organisation that is a member of the Tissue Viability Society. They will have the personal objectives to champion skin care to include prevention of pressure ulcers and care of the lower limb. Their role will be enshrined in an agreed addendum to their job description. They will complete a specific programme of education while undertaking the role of skin care champion. Their role will be to share information with their colleagues and to promote excellence in care, something in it for themselves and for their organisation. So what support will the TVS give the skincare champions? I'll tell you a bit, little bit more about monthly meetings for the champions in a moment, but there will be quarterly meetings for the managers to assist in ensuring that managers are fully aware of what we plan for the champions and to ensure that the champions receive the necessary management support to undertake their roles. An important part of the evaluation of the programme requires gathering of evidence so their ongoing support is crucial. The two Facebook groups are for individual managers and the champions are able to network and support each other. But there will be rules. For example, the TVS are not able to provide individual patient recommendations that might be construed as medical advice. The groups will be moderated and we will dis initiate discussions and facilitate sharing. We will develop an online resource centre specifically for the champions and we'll develop a quarterly newsletter. The Skincare Champions monthly meeting will be structured as shown here. We appreciate the challenge of not all champions being able to attend a specific day and time. So the education se sessions will be available online in a closed area of the website to allow those that could not attend to get the benefit of attendance. They may then be able to share with fellow workforce in their places of work, the contents. The focus will be on providing educational content and the means to share this with their teams. The educational content will not only include information pertaining to skincare, but how to make changes in practice and to gather information to demonstrate that these changes have been effective. We will endeavor to make the education and activities fun, things that are easily shared for example, an orange or a grapefruit to visualize the skin layers and categories of pressure ulcers. The TVS has the benefit of working with world leaders in their field, for example, podiatry, nursing, continence and end of life care, as well as wound care and prevention. Our trustees are working at regional and national levels. For example, here tonight, Nikki and I are part of the pressure ulcer stream of the National Wound Care Strategy Group. The education sets sessions content will be aligned with all the national programs. So what's in it for the organisation? Why should you choose to take part in this programme? Well, membership and participation in the programme and network will demonstrate to potential residents and carers and the CQC and other regulators in the other nations your commitment to excellence in care. A certificate of membership and participation will be provided and you can display to show visitors. Potential residents and carers will result in enhancement of their reputation. One organisation who will join our pilot is keen to develop individual staff members to enhance individual job satisfaction and assist with their retention of staff. We also hope 
to be able to provide some educational grants so that you or, or your skincare champions may come to the TVS conference to be held next year in Scotland. So the, the skincare champions pilot. Well, whilst we need to pilot um, so that we can develop the programme, we do intend for this to continue onwards. But the first cohort, the pilot, will be a small group of 10 to 15 persons. We won't be able to wait a year to start a second cohort as they're very much needed now and for this support in the home care sector. We have been fortunate, as Jeannie has already mentioned, that we've been successful in receiving an award that will support um, the employment of an educator and coordinator, which will enable us to have a second cohort starting in March or April next year. Now, the purpose of the pilot is to be able to test and then refine the communications and the tools developed and to evaluate the programme to develop the addendum to the job descriptions to everyone's satisfaction and to test and refine the closed Facebook groups as a concept for networking. Also to test and refine the meeting format. We will be using the methodology of PDSA cycles to assist us with this. Some of you may be familiar with this quality improvement methodology, which is plan, do, study, act, and introducing small tests of change to see if the change will be effective. We will be introducing this to our cohort of managers and champions in order to assist you with introducing improvements into your own clinical area. It is important to acknowledge that all organisations may be starting from a different starting point. Some of you here tonight will be here because you provide excellence in skin care. Others may be on a different place in their journey and be wanting to improve and make sure that they're at their best. This is our pilot timeline. As you can see, we're currently at the point of preparation and planning. We ask those that wish to express an interest, complete an expression of interest monkey survey. We can then use this information to select an appropriate day and time for the regular meetings. We will be doing continuous evaluations and debriefings following each champion and manager meetings. The very first meeting will set the scene and the need to collect the baseline data so that we can monitor at a later point for evaluating the impact of the project. So the expected outcomes. There'll be expected outcomes and they'll be different for, for the patients or clients and residents, for the home care and home care staff, for the skin care champions and for the health economy. For the patients, we want to see an improvement in skin health in the vulnerable clients and residents. For the home care and care home staff, we want them to have the presence of a skincare champion who will encourage and motivate the team to provide excellence in care. And for the skincare champions, we would like their attendance at monthly support meetings where the champions will receive education, quality and improvement information and the opportunity to discuss these. And as before, they will be provided with a protected website. For the healthcare economy, reducing the economic burden to the healthcare economy with less pressure ulcers, less leg ulcers and skin tears, etc., and reducing visits by community nurses, so better use of the existing resources. These outcomes will require a number of activities um, to be able to complete an evaluation of the outcome. We will need to be using a mixed methodology to measure these outcomes and the success of the project, some qualitative and some quantitative. Some will be easy. For example, we will monitor attendance at meetings and hits on the closed website to demonstrate whether they are efficient and functional. So what does good look like? We need to agree what the manager, with the managers to ensure we are realistic. We will include what the workplace has evidence that the champion is known by their fellow workers and has shared information and resources. There are some areas that will take at least a year to evidence, for example, reductions in patients with skin damage and any cost savings. Following a baseline audit, individual organisations will select an area for improvement, for example, a reduction in moisture associated skin damage or incontinence associated skin damage or reduction of skin cares. Pre and post education questions will allow us to determine if the champions themselves Feel they've gained knowledge and confidence. 
One of one-to-one -one interviews will allow us to gather rich qualitative data as to the perceived benefit of individuals and organizations. Of course, the really big test of the benefit to organizations is those wishing, up, wishing to sign up for the second year. Those that take part in the pilot will be rewarded with a second year provided free of charge as a, a thank you for taking part. Thank you very much. If you would like to have further information after this um, webinar tonight, please contact us on admin at tvs.org.uk. We've explained the importance of the project to practice. We've shared the history of the innovation on our work to date. We've outlined the projects and our expected outcomes. And we hope you will will come forward and take part in our exciting journey. Over to Nikki for questions. Thank you. Please don't be shy about putting any questions on. Um, but I'm just thinking one or two questions that perhaps might be of interest to, to other people. Um, so we talked a little bit, Tina, about how we need to be able to evidence that we've made a difference with this programme. Um, so, and we also talked a little bit about how uh, different organisations might be coming from a slightly different direction or, or have a different objective to achieve. Um, so it might be worth just sort of reassuring people that, um, that you know, we can really tailor make these objectives to the needs of your, uh, your organisations. Is that fair to say, guys? Yeah. Um, can I just say that, um, you know, it might sound when we speak to that as if it sounds like a burden of things to do. But always when we want to change practice, sometimes people come along with a wonderful idea um, to do that and they change everything. And actually just making a change doesn't mean that it's made an improvement. We often think that a new change will make an improvement, but actually sometimes if we don't know what it is that we're wanting to change and then we don't measure it and see whether that actually has made a change, then we might just have put ourselves um, to the trouble of making the change for the sake of it, just because somebody else thinks it's a good idea. So sometimes, you know, good ideas need to be tested um, and they need to be tested out and actually see whether that makes any difference. Um, so it is important, as I say, what we don't want, though, is to make this a burdensome thing where it's all about collecting more data. I'm sure those of you there, just like us, hate filling out forms and paperwork um, and um, already have enough of that um, to do. So what we want to do is looking at having simple methods mm. of just being able to count things um, and to be able to monitor it simply. Does that right. answer that question? Yeah, that's brilliant. Thank you. Okay, we've got a couple of questions coming in now. Um, so one of the questions is, in clinical practice, I feel that there is not enough MDT work across incontinence and pressure sore prevention. How can we improve this? Jeannie, would you be happy to take that one? Yeah, I, th I think that um, we, you know, have to see that it's a, a multidisciplinary issue, you know, um, we need to look at all the factors and things that are, you know, leading to the incontinence and, you know, the actions that we can take as a team to hopefully reduce the, the issue or manage the issue. And I think that would be one thing that we would want to explore through our um, project. You know, there would most definitely be um, sessions on managing incontinence and, you know, focused as well on that multidisciplinary team approach. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. It's a really, really good question here from Mandy. Uh, could I ask, is the programme for one person for each home? We have 12 homes, so would we need 12 champions or one for the company? So um, I can answer that if you like. Um, so what we've, what we've said is that um, that would really be up to you, but for each home that um, developed a champion, there would be the necessity for the home to register as a tissue viability um, society organisation. Um, so if you're a large organisation, you can have as many champions as you like. Um, but um, I think we would probably suggest that for the purposes of the, pro of the um, pilot, if you were interested in becoming part of the pilot, that perhaps it would be good to start perhaps with one 
measure how, what the impact of that is for you and the benefit and then look to expand it um, within the, the, the following cohorts. Anyone else got anything they want to add there? No, I would agree with you there, Nikki. Um, you know, we, we think this is a marvellous idea and we really want you to come on board with it. But actually, you know, introducing something slowly into your organisation, see the impact that one champion can have. But I don't think you could think, oh, we'll have one champion and then they'll share it with the 12 homes. Um, mm. Because I think that, you know, if they want them to have an impact, I think there needs to be one champion in one home. Yeah, I agree. I agree. It would be too big a job, wouldn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's another uh, question here. Um, Vicky, you might like to take this one because it's about education. And don't forget you're on mute like I did. <laughs> We need to explore the way we educate care homes. Currently, lots of attitude, skills and knowledge, more on attitude and changing behaviour with treating the whole person, not the whole in the person. Yeah, it's a very good question. And I, I, I come to this project from both professional and personal background. So I've professionally worked in aged care and you know, I work in industry now, but I've clinically been a tissue viability nurse and a district nurse and a carer in quite a few care homes. But I've also got a mum um, in a care home with very many comorbidities, including Parkinson's. Um, and I really got a lot of, uh, I bring a lot of emotion as well to this project in terms of, you know, what it can mean. But I think a lot of this project is about giving empowerment and, and actually empowering, you know, carers and nurses to be able to you know, give them the skills and the knowledge behind it to be able to identify when things aren't quite right, when there is redness and they need to get some sort of diagnosis. Um, and, and again, you know, treating the whole patient or resident and not just the whole in the, the resident and looking at that holistic approach. And that is, again, what we talked about just before about involving the multidisciplinary team. And often, you know, it's knowing who to contact and who do I have around as resources and things like that. So, yeah, I, I think it's about empowerment. And I think this this project and having the champions, if you like, will, will bring that. I think it's really about, um, you know, giving some 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 courage behind the decisions that the carers are making. And I, and I think this will be the real value to this project as well. So hopefully that will change, um, you know, attitude and, and behaviour as well. So thank you, Vicky. Um, uh, someone else is asking if they can have a copy of the slides that we've been sharing. Um, I think that'll be okay. I'm sure that they will get put on the relevant Facebook pages anyway, but um, as long as we've got your email address, I think it will be okay to share those as PDFs. Won't That's it? right. I mean, all the information and more is on the on the TVS website and in the in the brochure. Hopefully, you've all been um, able to find the brochure on the website and been able to download that because I say all this information and more is, is in there too. Mm -hmm. Uh, another question here um, about um, continents and the management of incontinence and just um, people expressing concern about the lack of knowledge out there, perhaps in some care homes about the choice of uh, products, etc, cetera, etc, cetera, and also about which is the most important thing, I, I think, which is about the promotion of continence, mm -hmm. as opposed to <laughs> mopping things up and uh, so, uh, so one of the questions is, will we include um, that continence promotion, the management of, of skin and breakdown of skin as a result of continence? In oh, the absolutely, absolutely, Nikki. Um, I, I personally feel very strongly um, about that um, because, you know, and I feel very strongly about making people to their best ability continent and have certainly experienced um, working in a care home um, and in a nursing home for dementia patients where they found that um, by regularly toileting um, individuals, they found that the, the amount of antibiotics the individuals had, the amount of laundry they had, the time spent um, with with patients dealing with incontinence and the quality of their skin improved. And that was a simple change that that, that um, care home had actually put in place and made such a difference to, to, the, to the residents. And I think, you know, promotion of continence is very much about skincare. Absolutely. 
Um, and then another really good one. So somebody who's worked with you previously, Tina, um, and um, saying how lucky she's been to work alongside you previously. Uh, but she'd like to ask about the confusion of the amount of different dressings that are used to manage wounds. Um, and would the champions learn the difference in them all? Jeannie, could you take that? Well, I think that we will always be mindful of the fact that, you know, anyone with a significant wound will need nursing input and, you know, nursing assessment. But we will certainly, you know, as part of this project, be explaining the differences maybe between the dressings and, you know, the simple dressings that could be used. But I think that if, you know, a wound is significant, I mean, the, they will need a, they will most definitely need a full holistic nursing assessment. Mm, yeah. But it's about, I suppose, what they will get is that kind of a, a bit more of a structure to that first aid approach yeah. from the champions, won't they, from the champion um, training. I was just going to say, add as well there, Nikki, as well, that I think it's really important. And uh, obviously, 100% what Jeannie said about it's all about assessment and then potentially referral and knowing when to refer. But when it comes to dressings, you know, dressings is the last resort. You know, dressings is what you do, it's about that holistic assessment, treating the underlying reason, you know, if it's a pressure ulcer, it's taking off the pressure, you know, and understanding, and that's what hopefully, you know, will help with that education as well. But when it does come to dressings, you know, I work in industry, but I see, I do have educators so many times in, in, in the care sector, and it's not about brands, it's about understanding the principles, understanding the categories of wound dressings and the rationale to why we're doing that certain dressing. So, you know, and this is what this course can really, you know, bring as well. It's that understand those basic principles. So, um, yeah, it's a really good question. Yeah, it is. Yeah. And uh, just that, the other yeah. one, is, which is the next question, um, which is a question really close to my heart, actually, um, is about person centric care planning and uh, promotion of self care. And I think, you know, what we've seen all of us during the COVID pandemic has been the necessity that's arisen for people to have to do more self-care, but also how that's empowered them to become more involved and more proactive in their own management. Um, and, uh, and, and I think that that's one of the really good outcomes of the pandemic, if there is anything is that people have become much more focused on their own conditions and, and how they can manage their own conditions as opposed to a nurse taking control of that. I think we'd all agree, would we? Oh, definitely. I mean, there's been a huge move towards self-care. Now, obviously those, um, those, those people that have home carers or, or, or in the care home can't provide the level of care for themselves um, as, as they might, but this, it's still very important that they actually have it personalised and should be encouraged um, to make as far as they can decisions about, about their care. And if they can participate, for example, in washing their own limbs um, and things like that, then we, we, you know, it's a very important part of the care. Yeah, thank you. Okay, is there, are there any more questions from anyone? Is there anything that the panellists feel we need to add. Okay. But some of the questions that I've been asked um, are things like, um, can we invoice, can people, can we send an invoice um, for that? Um, and the answer to that is, is yes. If, um, your, if your company, if you want to take part and your company needs an invoice, um, for those of you that have got company credit cards and can do that online, um, then that facility will be available um, too. Is that, and that's for the, um, for the tissue viability membership, is it, Tina? Or, or, yes, a membership of the, of, the, of the Skin Care Champions. Yeah, yeah. As oh, I said, this, is a, this is a nice positive one from Elaine who says, how do we go about taking part? That's, that's the next thing I was going to come to. <laughs> so, right. if, if, now then, um, if you've completed the survey, if you've not completed the survey, 
um, at, then, then please do so. Um, but in the survey, we asked whether you would like to be participating in the pilots of the programme or in, in the first cohort. Um, we, can, we only want to take a maximum of 15 in the first cohort. And that's going to be really important to us because we want to get this right. And for those of you that come to the second cohort, you'll know that we've 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 made adjustments and hopefully and improved on the way that we're delivering that. Um, if you're very keen to be in the 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 pilot, um, then it is first come first served. Um, so let us know that as soon as you possibly can um, that you want to be in that in that in that pilot. Um, those of you that if, if there's more than 15 of you that want to be in that pilot, then obviously we'll offer you the chance to be in the, the, you know, the second cohort um, to yeah. do that. And in terms of how we, they go about it, um, you know, as in physically, so if you've not already identified the expression of interest form, you'll be able to find that on the Tissue Viability Society website. So if you just Google and put in Tissue Viability Society, uh, then you will uh, be directed to that. Yep. And as this slide that, that's up, hopefully you can all see it. It says that um, if you need further information or you want to make sure that we've got your, your application in there, um, admin at tvs.org.uk is the email address. Um, and Dawn, um, one of our support team, will help support you with that. So I'm sure some of you are going to be very keen um, to participate yeah. through that. Now, one of the things that perhaps we haven't mentioned is that we have actually been recording this um, presentation to you. Um, so, you know, somebody asked about whether you could have the yeah, the slides. Um, you'll also be able to have access to, to this recorded um, presentation. Yeah, and we're absolutely delighted and really excited to be working with you all. Um, this has been, you know, in, we've been building up to this for the last six, seven months in lockdown and, um, and developing all kinds of different uh, ways in which we want to work with you going forward. So we really hope that, that a lot of you will come forward and join us and, um, and we'll be working together in the future. So thanks ever so much for your time. Thank you for your questions, those of you who have uh, submitted questions. And, um, and there'll be opportunities in plenty when we start the project proper. So have a fantastic Christmas and uh, <laughs> we'll see you all in the new year. And can I just say a special thank you to Abigail who's, who brought the original idea to us um, or inspired oh. our original plan. So thank you, Abigail. Yeah, thank you.